Welcome to part 5 of our series Miracles and Wonders and the question is today what is the aim with all the miracles? You know many Christians today they believe that the aim of a revival is big miracles and um, when people believe that God can do miracles this is the aim but this is in vain. The same problem we had in the Bible when Jesus was starting to do big miracles, many miracles. The people believed in his name, standing in John chapter 2, verse 23. They saw the miracles he did and believed in his name, but Jesus was going on distance. This was not the aim that people believe Jesus can do miracles. The maximum of the problem was in John 6, when Jesus was feeding 5,000 people. They wanted to make him king. They believed in his name. They believed that he can give bread for all the people in need. He can free us from Rome. He can heal everybody. But Jesus was running away because this was not his aim. When this would happen today, 5,000 people shout, Jesus is our king. We believe in his name. Then many would believe this is a revival. But in the Bible standing, they had hardened their heart. In Mark 5.52 or 6.52. I'm sorry, I don't have it right now. But the problem is here. They have hardened their heart. They had wrong expectations. They were believing in Jesus, but they were wrong. They believe Jesus came to solve our problems and they had a totally wrong point of view. The same today. Many people believe today it must only use the name of Jesus and then my wishes and desires uh, will happen and all I want and all I proclaim will become true. This is not biblical faith. Um, we must come a little bit closer and here in Matthew 9 we have a wonderful story. Here we see the aim. So he got into a boat, crossed over and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. So Jesus saw that these people have faith that he can heal. Yes, he can. But this was not the aim. Here we see the aim is that the people understand the point with sin and forgiveness. Because the biggest problem in our life is not illness, it's not poorness. It is sin. And in John 16 verse 8, Jesus says the Holy Spirit must convince us about sin. And I promise you. When we would see sin in all its evil, we would fear one sin more than Corona and all diseases and all problems in the world. God must open our eyes. We are blind for that. We are looking for miracles. God should change our circumstances, but we are blind in which danger we are in our life and in eternity because of sin. Today many would say, Jesus, how do you talk to this poor man? He is ill. When you can do something, help him, heal him. But why are you talking about sin? But you know, in that time, it was different. It was not able, it was not possible for humans to forgive sin. Today, we hear it in every church. God is forgiving sin. But it was not possible in that time to think like that. We must think ourselves back in that time. For the religious people, it was not possible to say these words. Only God had the authority to forgive sin. So the question is, who is Jesus when he forgives sin? Look, and some of the scribes said with in themselves this man blasphemes but Jesus knowing their thoughts said why do you think evil in your hearts for which is easier to say your sin are forgiven 
you ought to say, Arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Do you get the point? Jesus asked a very interesting question. What is easier to say? Your sin is forgiven? Or to say, take your bed and go? Think about this question. For us humans, it's not possible to say, take your bed and go. We have not the power to heal another one. What is easier to say? Yes, for us today, it's easier to say, your sin are, are forgiven. We can say this only words, but not in that time. And is this really easy to say for Jesus? Take the position of Jesus. What is easier for him to make this miracle? For Jesus, it was no problem to make this miracle and to heal him. So what is easier for him? Jesus was never wondering about a wonder. He has all the power in heaven and on earth and nothing is impossible for him. But what was difficult for him? To take our sins on himself, to go to the cross and to suffer and to die for our sins. In Jesaja, one prophesy says, God, with your sin, you made much troubles for me. It is not only easy words from God, your sin is forgiven. No, he came to this world. He became a human to suffer and to die the punishment we deserve. This was not easy. It was hard. It was painful. And this is the biggest miracle on earth. We see the love of God. So big is the love of God to us. Pray to God that he may open your eyes for the evilness of sin. Jesus came to save us from sin. But we must open our eyes. We must repent from all sin and evil and Satan. And come to Christ. To receive forgiveness and a new holy life in harmony with God. This is the aim of all miracles. Happy welcome to the next part tomorrow.